Now, Ruben is excited about this bout. One of the ring greats, so you know everybody else is too. If ever a fight between two guys was made in heaven, this is it. This is the third time they have fought. Each has defeated the other guy once. I think it's going to be an outstanding bout. I think it's going to be a great one as they uh, the first two were. Their styles were made for each other, Chick. And it's just uh, whoever's got the most gasoline in that tank is going to win the fight. They are both southpaws. The one thing that I worry about is that they both cut very easily and often. And so we don't want to have a bout stop for that, do we? What about scoring in case they go the distance? Well, it's going to be on the 10-point must system. The winner of the round will get 10 points, the loser gets 9. Now, in case of a knockdown, the fighter getting knocked down will get 8. And, of course, the gentleman center will get 10. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll go to a commercial now, and then we'll come right back. We'll open our show, folks, with a 10-rounder. It's our Budweiser Super Flyweight Tournament semifinal bout between Abner Barajas and Esteban Ayala. It should be a good one. Stay tuned. Real good fight. Back on November the 4th, qualifying for this semifinal bout in the red trunks, Esteban Ayala pins his man in the corner, knocks Lorenzo Lopez down, falls down himself, but the knockout has been accomplished, sending him to the semifinal bout tonight against Barajas. Barajas on October the 7th qualified by surprising and upsetting Cecilio Espino. It was a 10-round split decision. Despite the fact Barajas was knocked down in the final round, the judges still awarded him the win. Esteban Ayala. Well, I'll tell you, this guy's got a record. 14 victories, 13 of them by knockouts. As an amateur, he had 19 victories, 18 by knockouts. So he, he likes to do it one way. Abner Barajas. Fighting out of Phoenix, he's formerly of Mexico. His record is 16 and 6. He's had seven knockouts. He's a very tough kid. And he got to this uh, fight beating a good boxer, Cecilio Espino. All right, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very happy holidays to you. Good evening and welcome to the home of championship boxing, the Great Western Forum in Inglewood, California. Once again, we have a big night of action coming your way as we present the final show of our 1991 season, which features a WBC World Championship bout, and it is all brought to you by Forum Boxing Incorporated, along with Budweiser, the king of beers. Now presenting the officials as appointed by the California State Athletic Commission, physicians at ringside, Dr. Robert Carnes, Dr. Michael DeLuca. Timekeepers at the bell, also keeping count of the knockdowns, we have Aaron Coslow and John Lichty. Judging at ringside, trading off duties. We have Lou Moret, Dr. James Jenkin, Pat Russell, and the referee in charge. He will be giving instructions after the introductions, Chuck Hassett. All right, fans, here we go. We start off our evening with one of our featured bouts. It is scheduled 10 rounds of boxing as we present the Budweiser Super Flyweight Tournament Semi-Final Bout. Presenting to you first on my left, fighting out of the red corner, he is wearing black trunks with white lettering. Fighting out of Phoenix, Arizona, he weighed in at 115 and one quarter pounds. His record, 16 wins, six losses, seven wins by way of knockout. Welcome a fighter they call Little Abner Baraha. And his opponent across the ring. On my right, fighting out of the blue corner in this 10-round Budweiser Super Flyweight Tournament bout. He is wearing white trunks with red lettering. Fighting out of Mexico City, Distrito Federal, Mexico. He weighed in at the same weight of 115 and 1 quarter pounds. With a record of 14 wins, 4 losses, 1 draw. He has 13 big wins by way of knockout. Please welcome Esteban Ayala. Once again, here's your referee in charge, Chuck Hassett. Esteban. Mouthpiece, mouthpiece. Okay, you've had your instructions in the dress room. Is there any questions? Okay, want to sort this. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here's how they stack up. Barajas is 5-4 against Ayala's 5-2. They both weigh the same, 115 and a quarter, each 25 years of age. A four-inch reach advantage for Barajas in the black trunks. Chuck Hassett, fine official, is the third man in the ring. It's a 10-rounder. Budweiser semifinal, super flyweight bout. And one of these guys will go to the finals, and of course the winner in the finals will get $65,000. And with a flurry, Ayala's all over his man Barajas. Barajas goes for the tie-up, not a bad idea. <laughs> Oh, with 13 knockouts, Chick. I'd tie him up, too. Good chopping right hand scored by Barajas. 
And he got in another sharp right hand to the chin. Barajas gets hit a lot. He fades in the late rounds. Ayala himself in the white trunks is a very poor defensive fighter. He's a fast starter and then slows. And that's why he's trying to get this thing over with in a hurry. The question is, can he pace himself a little bit? How's his stamina? Okay, hold it there, hold it there. He's trying to stay on top of Barajas. And uh, Barajas does not like inside fighting. So that's good tutoring over there from Armando Rayon in the corner of Ayala. Al Finn handling Little Abner, Barajas. These are two kids that will take the shot to give one. Right there, break them, break them. Biggest moment of either of their careers. One of them will advance to the finals of the Budweiser Great Western Forum Super Flyweight Tournament. Keep punch, keep punch. Oh, good shot to the stomach by Barajas. He's from Mexico, but now fights out of Phoenix, Arizona. Good left hand, a hook caught the jaw of Barajas. They're punching with a fury now. Barajas drives him back into the ropes right above us. Boy, is he throwing some dynamite? Yeah, Yellow's a very aggressive fighter, Chick, but as you said earlier, he takes a lot of shots. Hopping right, left hand, and that staggered Barajas. You know, he's, Ayala's got 13 knockouts and 14 wins, but how many times did he hit the canvas, Chick? I see his legs aren't very stable. That's what I'm telling you. He, uh, he gets hit a lot. Both of them do. They're not good defensive fighters, but they win with offense. At least so far in their careers, they have. Ayala and the Whites only lost one fight in his 15 tries. Barajas has lost six out of 22. Ayala could intimidate you if you weren't a very brave man. This kind of, oh, a good uppercut by Barajas. Ayala stays right on top of him. Don't grab his head, the referee Chuck Asik told him. Solid block. This Barajas is a very tough fighter. Another one. He's taking some good shots and he delivers a lot of good shots. He does. Got a good, strong left. All right, end of round one. Let's follow Ayala back to the corner. Ayala came out in a hurry and in a flurry. Tried to get it over with. No go. We'll go to the corner with our microphones and uh, get a translation from Ruben Castillo. Give him money, Jim. Onde tu cuerpo? Onde tu cuerpo? Cuando quieres para tirar el loper, no desaproveches. He wants him to keep moving side to side. He says, keep the pressure on him, especially when you throw your uppercuts. Take advantage. Now, Ruben will be scoring the fight along with the three judges at ringside. The referee does not have a vote. In the corner of Little Abner Barajas. I think we're still here in the corner of Ayala. <laughs> and Barajas is going. All right, here we go. Round number two of a ten. The Budweiser semifinal, super flyweight. Good first round. How'd you score that? I gave that round to Ayala. He came out strong, landed the most punches, but Barajas came back. Each man weighed 115 and a quarter. Good jab. In the corner of a... Another good jab by Barajas. In the corner of a yellow, they told him to move his, his waist to go side to side. He's going right to left. Up. Yeah, now he is. Now, yeah. He took too many shots that first round, huh? Good card tonight for you. Daniel Zaragoza against Paul Bacchus for the WBC Super Bantamweight title. They fought three times and each has beaten the other once. And they have fought twice, I should say. This will be the third time. Constant punching power from the fists of Ayala in the white. The 
says his best punch is his right hand. He likes to follow up that left jab. There's an abrasion chip over the right eye of uh, Barajas. Looks like it'll be a turn into a cut pretty soon. There's a minute left in round two. Yeah, he's bleeding. Yeah, now it is this. It appears to be in the corner of the eyebrow, outside the eyeball area. But the closer inspection by the doctors may prove that to be wrong. I'm not sure that Barajas knows he's cut yet. I don't think so. He hasn't mopped at it at all. Usually a fighter will instinctively, won't it? Absolutely. If it's getting in his eye, he sure will. It's not the bleeding that much yet. Oh, what a crashing right hand scored by Barajas and coming right back, countering is Ayala. He was just waiting for that jab to, to come off of Ayala and just right over the top of that jab, he landed that right hand. There's blood on the cheek of Ayala, but I think it's from the cut on Barajas. Okay, final seconds of round two. I've got it 20 to 18 in favor of Ayala. You won both rounds. Remember, folks, under the California must system, you win a round and there's no knockdown. It's a 10-9 round. Knockdown, make it 10-8. Okay, break, break, break. And if there's too many knockdowns, you call it a night. <laughs> call it a good left hand chopping to the jaw of Ayala. No doubt about it that Ayala has Barajas' attention. Ayala comes at you from top to bottom. Right and left. Good shot delivered by Barajas on a counter move. There's only one bad problem there, Chick, is that Ayala, Ayala is just standing straight up and down. Too much. Absolutely no uh, mobility in his body, just up and down. Oh, a good shot to the midsection by Barajas. Two fine fighters, as they should be, representing the semifinals of the Budweiser tournament. Super flyweights. Jerry Romano is our producer. Susan Stratton directing with a fine, prime network crew. We go coast to coast. Solid blow scored by Ayala. So far, Bar oh, Barajas lands it right in the fact two rights of his own. Barajas can take a punch. Absolutely. Remember the last fight with Espino? He took some good shots and toward the end of the fight, he came on strong. He really did. It was a big upset when he beat Cecilio Espino. Absolutely. Right here on the 7th of October. Ayala can deliver punches, short punches, very, very quickly. And his uh, target is usually hit. No problem with the cut of Barajas near the right eye area. Dave Barajas fights pretty well when he's against the ropes. He can really come out with a strong right hand. He does very well in counter punching, Jake. He yep. just waits for Ayala to get off and he throws his own punches. Final seconds of round number three, and it's been just what we expected, a very Great Western Forum Budweiser tournament, semifinal. For those that uh, just joined us, the winner of the tournament gets $65,000 for the final match. The loser gets $10,000 for the final match. You know, in the corner of Barajas, when we were in commercial check, they were telling him to use the jab more. Keep Ayala on the outside of the jab, and he started to, he's starting to do that. That would be, that will help him a lot. That's what I said early in the fight. Uh, uh, Barajas does not like to fight inside. 
He likes to keep you at a distance. Sometimes you can't keep a guy like Ayala at the distance. Ayala, let me just make this point right now here in the fourth round in the right corner. He usually starts just like he started tonight, very fast. And he usually fades in the later rounds. If the later rounds, in fact, do come about. Because he's won 13 of his 14 victories with knockouts. Good overhand right by Barajas. Oh, what a strong right hand. Jarred the head of Barajas. Barajas is a good counter puncher. He's quick. He's accurate. His left hook is his best shot. Barajas in the blood. He had a strange start in his pro career. He got knocked out in his very first fight. He quit the ring for 14 months. Barajas has been in with some good ones, like he was the chief sparring partner for Michael Kaibahal. Uh, that'll give you some experience. Michael's a great champion. That's right. The Olympic gold medal winner. A very exciting fighter. Ayala really pouring it on now. And what are we the got? Bang the bang heads. Yes, yep. look at the blood head just butt. streaming right out of the head. Ayala, Ayala is really cut. Oh, He is really cut. Uh, take a look now at... Uh, Barajas, he's not. They may stop this right oh, now. Oh, jeez. Doctor's that's... taking a look. It's up around the hairline, it appears, from here. The doctors here tonight are Dr. Robert Carnes and Dr. Michael DeLuca. And Dr. DeLuca taking a close look. Referee Chuck Hassett there. It's all over. It's all over. Boy, I hate to see fights I know it. That's end like this. I hope that the championship fight tonight doesn't, because I mentioned earlier, there it goes and Banky both cut easily. A point off for Butt. The Butt will be charged to Barajas. Yes. Here, here it is, right here. Looks to me that uh, Yala ran into him. If, if that was it right there, I think so too. I think yes. he ran into Barajas. Ask Chuck who he took it away he from. He took it away from Barajas. Okay, he did indeed take the point away from Barajas. We've checked with Chuck Hass at the referee. Okay, we will come back with the official outcome of this fight. The Budweiser semifinal Super Flyway on Prime Network, coast to coast. Championship boxing at the Great Western Forum in our tournaments. On a technical decision based on a butt or other illegal maneuver, California rules dictate that the recipient of the butt or other illegal maneuver is the winner of the bout if he's ahead on points at the time of the infraction. So, you had him ahead on points. I had him ahead on points. But of course, you are unofficial, uh, although you usually are right on with him. The uh, judges are Dr. James Jenkin, Pat Russell, and over on the other side of the ring over there, that's Lou Moret. Lou Moret. So they will make the decision. And if indeed, Ayala, who was cut on the butt, is ahead on points, he will win the decision according to the tournament rules. Let's take another look and see if we can tell just exactly where it came from. It's a tough angle. There it was, yeah. See, Ayala came into him. That was it, all right. Ayala appeared to go into him. Barajas thought that he was cut, and indeed he wasn't. I think Ayala was ahead anyway. I think uh, he's going to win the fight anyhow, Chief. But I, I, I don't understand why they took a point from Barajas when he was the recipient of the headbutt. If, if indeed the picture we're looking at, the angle is so tough you could not tell because they both have a, a very strong growth of hair and you just couldn't tell. Barajas seems to be in a frivolous mood. The fight, of course, was in the fourth round. The clock stopped at two minutes and five seconds. Good cut man in the corner of Esteban Ayala. All right, Jimmy Lennon Jr. with this important announcement. The winner of this fight goes to the finals. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout has been stopped. Two minutes, five seconds in round number four. Ringside physician Dr. Michael DeLuca deeming the fighter unable to continue after an unintentional headbutt. At this point, we go to the scorecards. Judge at ringside, Dr. James Jenkins scores about 38-38, even a draw. Pat Russell scores at 38-37. Lou Moret scores at 39-36. In favor of the winner, majority decision winner, continuing in the tournament, 
Esteban Ayala. Ayala. He was ahead on two cards, and Dr. James Jenkin had a 38-38. Ruben had a 39-37. One of the other judges had a 39-36, and 38-37 by another of the judges. So his record now is 15 and 4. We're at the Great Western Forum in Inglewood, California, and we will be back with more. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I'd like to have your attention for a special presentation we have with us tonight. A gentleman who two weeks ago battled in France